snazzy. <laughs> okay. Well, you only got one announcement, so I have to tap dance for a while. I don't want you to go home too early and, you know. Who is visiting here today? He said, looking toward the back row. There she is. Wait, wait, wait. Okay. I'm loud enough without it. Good morning from Hendersonville, Tennessee. I'm uh, longtime friends with uh, Pastor Lewis and Amy and spent the weekend quilting and spending money and having a grand time. I'm happy to join you this morning. Thank you. Holly. Thank you, Holly. Anyone else? All right. Your, your announcement is... We are having soup suppers after the Lenten worship services on Wednesday evenings. We need people to help set up and clean up the eating we got. To set up and clean up, we're a little light. So if you're planning on eating, you might want to consider setting up and cleaning up. Or if you just want to come and clean up, that would be fine as well. So, any other announcements for the sake of guests, ma'am? My goodness. All right, so we want everybody. You didn't say anything on here. All right, so we want people here at 4 to set up at 4. Okay. That, that's fine. Ain't that, okay. I just, want make, I just want to make sure we were done. If there is nothing from the assembly as you are able, I would invite you please to stand for the brief order for confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who journeys with us these 40 days and sustains us with the gift of grace. Let us acknowledge before God and in the presence of one another our need for repentance and God's mercy. Holy God, we confess to you our faults and failings. Too often we neglect and do not trust your holy word. We take for ourselves instead of giving to others. We spoil rather than steward your creation. We cause hurt, though you call us to heal. We choose fear over compassion. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us as we seek to follow in your way of life. Amen. Hear the good news. God so loved the world that God gave the only Son so that all may receive life. This promise is for you. God embraces you with divine mercy, forgives you in Christ's name, and revives you in the Spirit's power. Amen. Amen.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit is with you all. And also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. in the highest and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God and we King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your strength, the struggle between good and evil rages within and around us. The devil and all the forces that defy you tempt us with empty promises. Keep us steadfast in your word, and when we fall, raise us again and restore us through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated.
reading from Genesis. The Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to till it and keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, you may freely eat of every tree of the garden, but of the tree of knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat. For in the day that you will eat of it, you shall die. Now the serpent was more crafty than any other wild animal that the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, did God say you shall not eat from any tree in the garden? The woman said to the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the trees in the garden. But God said, you shall not eat of the fruit of the tree that is in the middle of the garden, nor shall you touch it or you shall die. But the serpent said to the woman, you will not die for God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God knowing good and evil. So when the women saw that the tree was good for food and that it was a delight to the eyes and the tree was to be desired to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate. She also gave some to her husband who was with her and he ate. Then the eyes of both were opened and they knew that they were naked and they sewed fig leaves together and made loincloths for themselves. The word of the Lord. Happy are they whose transgressions are forgiven and whose sin is put away. My tongue, my bones withered away because of my groaning all day long. I acknowledged my sin to you and did not conceal my guilt. I said I will confess my transgressions to the Lord, then you forgave me the guilt of my sin. Therefore, all people will make their prayers to you in time of trouble. When the great waters overflow, they shall not reach them. You are my hiding place, you preserve me from trouble. You surround me with shouts of deliverance. I will instruct you and teach you in the way that you should go. I will guide you with my eye. Do not be like horse or mule which have no understanding who must be fitted with bit and bridle, or else they will not stay near you. Great are the tribulations of the wicked, but mercy embraces those who trust in the Lord. Be glad, you righteous, and rejoice in the Lord. Shout for joy, all you who are true of heart. reading from Romans. Just as sin came into the world through one man, and death, death came through sin, and so death spread to all because all have sinned. Sin was indeed in the world before the law, but sin is not reckoned when there is no law. Yet death exercised dominion from Adam to Moses, even over those whose sins were not like the transgression of Adam, who is a type of the one who has to come. But the free gift is not like the trespass. For if the many died through the one man's trespass, much more surely have the grace of God and the free gift in the grace of the one man, Jesus Christ, abounded for the many. And the free gift is not like the effect of the one man's sin. For the judgment following one trespass brought condemnation. 
but the free gift following many trespasses brings justification. If, because of the one man's trespass, death exercised dominion through that one, much more surely will those who receive the abundance of grace and the free gift of righteousness exercise dominion in life through the one man, Jesus Christ. Therefore, just as one man's trespass led to the condemnation for all, so one man's act of righteousness leads to justification and life for all. For just as by the one man's disobedience, the many were made sinners, so by the one man's obedience, the many will be made righteous. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the fourth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. He fasted 40 days and 40 nights, and afterwards he was famished. The tempter came and said to him, If you are the Son of God, command these stones to become loaves of bread. But Jesus answered, It is written, One does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city and placed him on the pinnacle of the temple, saying to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down. For it is written, He will command his angels concerning you, and on their hands they will bear you up, so that you will not dash your foot against a stone. Jesus said to him again, It is written, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. The devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor and said to Jesus, all these I will give you if you will fall down and worship me. Jesus said to him, away with you, Satan, for it is written, worship the Lord your God and serve only him. The devil left him and suddenly angels came and waited on him. This is the gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. Once upon a time in a land far, far away. Well, actually it wasn't all that far. It was in upstate South Carolina. There were two custodians who worked at Trinity Lutheran Church, Ed and Carol. Ed was more outgoing. He had a quick smile and ready banter with everybody. He used to call my brother that left-handed guitar picker. Even though Steve did and does play guitar right-handed, he was, for all of his years at Trinity, that left-handed guitar picker. Carol, the second of the duo, was more quiet, but he was always there. And when I was but a wee child... I was learning to sit still in church. I discovered that wiggling and fidgeting drove my parents insane. Also, wiggling and fidgeting could get me out of church. So, wiggling and fidgeting it would be. After some prime Wiggling and fidgeting, mom would take me by the hand and march me down the side aisle toward the sacristy door. Big white thing with this wind glass, stained glass thing in the center with a little tiny piece of clear glass right in the middle. And Carol would be watching through that little tiny piece of glass. And right about the time we hit the sacristy door, Carol would open the door and whisk me away to show me the boiler room with my mother trailing along behind. I thought this was absolutely marvelous. What an adventure. You get to see the furnace and the boilers and all the pipes and the duct work and all this stuff. And I got to ride along on this giant guy's shoulders. I thought, this is pretty cool. My mother had a different expression on her face as she was walking along, not looking particularly like this was a cool thing. And this went on for a while. Each time my mother was ready to lower the boom, Carol 
would intercede. I had a sweet system. Get tired of church, wiggle a little bit, you get to go see the furnace and the boilers, bing, bing, bing. Worked like a charm right up until the time when it did not. <laughs> on that last fateful week, we approached the sacristy door and Carol opened it right on cue, ready to go, and my mother said, uh-uh, not this time. Carol looked crestfallen. <laughs> I, I just was scared. My mother and I had a brief discussion in the bathroom. There was no boiler room adventure, no riding on Carol's shoulders. In fact, I stood up for quite a while after that little discussion. What, <laughs> what had happened? My plan was so sound. The execution was flawless. I was at a loss. It would appear that I was not in charge of the situation. And that was quite a shock to my young system. Later, I would encounter a poem by William Ernest Henley, Invictus. You may not know the poem, but I can almost guarantee you that you know the hook line. Out of the night that covers me black as the pit from pole to pole, I thank whatever gods may be for my unconquerable soul. In the fell clutch of circumstance, I have not winced nor cried aloud under the bludgeonings of chance. My head is bloodied, but unbowed. Beyond this place, wrath and tears looms but the horrors of the shade. And yet, the menace of the years finds and shall find me unafraid. It matters not how straight the gate, how charged with punishments the scroll. Here comes the money line. I am the master of my fate. I am the captain of my soul. Now, it's one thing when you're four years old, struggling to make sense out of why you got to sit still on a hard wooden pew and listen to somebody talk about something you don't understand. It's another thing altogether when, as an adult, you apply this logic to life in community. When you apply this logic to interacting with the holy, Matthew's temptation narrative hits us where we live because the gambits of the devil are so deliciously timeless and contemporary. To be the master of my own faith, the captain of my soul, that really that really is attractive, isn't it? To be large and in charge. To have all that is and all that will be revolve around me. To be the center of the salvific universe. Grace may be fine for others. But I can do this myself. God may do most of the work. Yeah, 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 okay. But I still have to contribute that last little bit. That 0.005%, because without that, poor old God is helpless, waiting on me to get it together. Therefore, I am the master of my faith, the captain of my soul. I know you're hungry, turn these stones into bread, exercise a little power over the natural environment, make it bend to serve you rather than you stewarding creation. It's just a little bread. Who cares? You're in charge. You're hungry. You need this. I know you're curious. Let's play a game of chicken with God. Force God to dance to your tune. Jump off of here, and God will save you. It says so right there in Scripture. Or stand on the corner and hold your breath until you turn blue. It's about the same difference. They're equally as effective because you're acting like a toddler. A big toddler, but a toddler nonetheless. My wants. My desires. Well, actually, me, myself. I'm just more important. Look at me. Love me. Save me. I can make God dance to my tune because I am the master of my fate, the captain of my soul. 
and the most obvious, don't worship God. Worship me, the devil. Man, that's just textbook. I'll give you all this. Sounds like me and my brother playing Monopoly. I'll give you this much. All of the kingdoms will be yours if the price is right. Just worship me. Don't worship God. Worship me. That's textbook idolatry. I think the devil's starting to lose steam by the time he gets to the third temptation. That one's a little obvious. But taken together, the ancient is amazingly contemporary because the same temptation is present. Listen to the news. Read the paper. Watch the television. It's the same temptation. Be in charge. Be louder than everybody else. It's all about you. That's the temptation. To place self at the center. My wants, my opinions, my understanding takes precedent over all else. All of those temptations are idolatry. And all three are rejected by Christ. So when we get caught up worrying about, oh, I don't know, vitally important things like what time we worship or what hymns we sing, perhaps it would be instructive as we begin another Lenten journey to ask what do we worship? Why do we worship? And most importantly, who do we worship? Amen. church we confess our faith using the words of the apostles creed i believe in god the father almighty creator of heaven and earth i believe in jesus christ god's only son our lord who was conceived by the holy spirit born of the virgin mary suffered under pontius pilate was crucified died and was buried he descended to the dead on the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. 
and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. Sustained by God's abundant mercy, we pray for the church, the world, and all of creation. You alone are God. Sustain your church in times of wilderness. Give vision and wisdom to Elizabeth and Kevin, our bishops, their staff, and all entrusted with the ministry of administration. Counsel all who faithfully lead your people into the future. Merciful God, you create verdant gardens and expansive deserts. Tend to the needs of every living creature. Bless those who work in fields and orchards, that the world is nourished by the fruits of their labor. Merciful God, you know our temptations. Sustain those who govern and legislate. Instill in them a sense of your justice and righteousness that equity and peace would pervade all the regions and nations of the world. We continue to pray for the people of Ukraine and Afghanistan. We pray for those seeking to rebuild in Syria and Turkey. Merciful God, you are a hiding place for all in distress. Draw near to exiles and accompany all refugees and immigrants, especially children who travel alone. In times of trouble, trauma, or illness, surround your people with your steadfast love, especially Betty A, Don B, Sherry B, Ruby C, Tara Lou C, Dwayne D, David F, Judy H, Bill H, Carl K, Lowell K, Paul K, Pastor Joe, David S, Bev S, Vicki S, Grace and Walt T, Kathy and Larry W. Merciful God. You offer abundance to all. Bless the ministries of hospitality in this place. Care for those who tend to the needs of others, especially worship greeters and coffee hour hosts. Merciful God. We pray for this nation. Our President Joseph Biden. Tennessee's Governor Bill Lee and his wife Maria, Cumberland County Mayor Alan Foster, and all first responders, merciful God, you alone are God. We praise you for the faithful departed of every age. Unite our prayers with theirs until our wilderness journey is complete and we rest in you, merciful God. Brothers and sisters, I invite you to lift silently now before God's throne of grace those concerns and cares and celebrations which you carry in your lives this day. We lift our prayers to you, O God, prayers offered aloud, prayers uttered silently, prayers for which we have no words all trusting in your steadfast love and your promise to renew your whole creation through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. As you are able, I invite you to stand. Peace of the risen Christ is with you always. I invite you to share that peace with one another.
God of good gifts, receive these and all our offerings as we present them in faithful service for the sake of your gospel. Prepare our hearts to receive you in this meal as you pour out your very presence through Jesus Christ, the wellspring of eternal life. Amen. The Lord is with you. Lift up your hearts, bring them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy. That we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. You call your people to cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast, that renewed in the gift of baptism we may come to the fullness of your grace. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, give you thanks, Father, through Jesus Christ, your beloved Son, whom you sent in this end of the ages to save and redeem us and to proclaim to us your will. He is your word, inseparable from you, through whom you created all things and in whom you take delight. He is your word, sent from heaven to a virgin's womb. He there took on our nature and our lot and was shown forth as your Son, born of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary. He, our Lord Christ, fulfilled all your will and won for you a holy people. He stretched out his hands in suffering in order to free from suffering those who trust you. He is the one who handed over to a death he freely accepted in order to destroy death, to break the bonds of the evil one, to crush hell underfoot, to give light to the righteous, to establish his covenant, and to show forth the resurrection. The night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering then his death and resurrection, we take this bread and cup, giving you thanks that you have made us worthy to stand before you and to serve you as your priestly people. Send your spirit upon these gifts of your church. Gather into one all who share this bread and wine. Fill us with your Holy Spirit to establish our faith and truth, that we may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ, through whom all glory and honor are yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, now and forever.
and receive Jesus, our strength in the wilderness. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. you if you are communing in your pews that the words you hear spoken at this altar are spoken also for you. The body of Christ is given for you. The blood of Christ is shed for you. body of Christ given for
Please stand. Embodied God, in this meal, we have tasted the goodness of Jesus. With the eyes of our hearts open to your promise, empower us to hear the needs of neighbor and touch the world with your love. God, the giver of love, Christ, the resurrection and the life and the Holy Spirit of rebirth, bless you in this Lenten journey. Amen. People of Christ Lutheran Church, what defines us? Baptized people of God, saved by the gift of grace, empowered by the Holy Spirit, and sent into the world to share the good news of God's love. Go in peace, serve in love.